Well, you know, first of all, you know, this was a different historical period. Mm. Uh, I was in person from 1969 to 19, actually 1984. And um, the the situation for us then was uh, they didn't have, uh, they hadn't created what they call now the, the uh, special handling or special housing units. Right. And uh, they, they created those later. And, and they created those because of the success of the black prisoners movement of the 1960s and early 1970s. Uh, we were extremely powerful. We were essentially running the prisons. And uh, we were a political revolutionary force that had uh, actually become the central uh, radical institution in America, uh, mm -hmm. the prisoners movement, the black prisoners movement. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, when they uh, went over to using uh, the special housing units, which was for long-term uh, solitary confinement, when they, when they actually went over to using this, it was as a uh, tool to try to destroy the, the movement as a whole. And so I was locked up uh, for quite some time uh, I, I managed, however, to file uh, the first time uh, when I was in Springfield, uh, Missouri, they created what they call the special training and rehabilitative, special treatment and rehabilitative training unit, which was uh, for behavior modification, brainwashing, more or less. And they, it was experimental. And they used doctors in there to try to force you to take drugs and all this kind of thing, you know, psychotropic drugs. Well, um, yeah. we were able, I was able to get out of that unit myself, and when I got out uh, by, order, by order of a court, I was able to uh, contact people in the street. In fact, there was a book written by Jessica Mitford called Kind and Usual Punishment, which was written at this time that exposed it. And, uh, and also there were exposures in the newspaper, and, and there was lawsuits filed and everything, and eventually the place was ruled to be uh, unconstitutional and so forth, and they closed it down. But uh, I, people spent a lot of time in there. Some people spent uh, years and years. And when they came out, some people committed suicide. You know, oh, they, yeah. the, the, the psychological conditioning had, had warped their brains, you know, and they just they, they committed suicide. Uh, so we, we're talking about um, this being used as a tool. They refined it over the course yeah. of years. Yeah. They refined it. And, and now it's long-term confinement plus behavior modification you know, plus starvation and whatever else is a tool for them to work to just try to destroy your will. On that last point of like um, how they've refined it and, and really tried to lock down um, black, particularly black mm -hmm. struggle within these prisons. Um, um, I know we've heard about the Californian hunger, prison hunger strike right. at the moment. And what are your thoughts about how that's, you know, how that's developed and do you see right. uh, a resurgence of like, Radical Well, well that's like a good business. question, whether we're seeing the resurgence of radicalism. I don't know that part, but I do know this. Uh, the protest was against solitary confinement. Mm, mm, mm. And, 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 to, and that tells me a great deal, yeah. you know, so having been in prison. That tells me that uh, the prisoners have reached this level of consciousness, that they recognize uh, what the officials are doing and that they have to fight it head on. And that every struggle from now on out is going to have to deal with that. And mm. I think that that's what you're going to see. You're going to see this one strike become many strikes ultimately, and become many uh, acts of resistance, not just strikes. Who knows what's going to happen mm. from here on out? But I think you're going to see more and more of that because the officials have have made the determination what they're going to do is that when you just come to prison from now on, and this is what they're doing, if they're just throwing you into uh, what used to be called solitary confinement, uh, and now it's just behavior modification units throw you in there and just leave you in there for, for all of your time. You got 50 years, you'll be in there 50 years. Mm -hmm. and, and so these two things, actually, the death of Herman Wallace, who spent 43 years in solitary confinement mm -hmm. uh, and as an ex-Black Panther, mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, California prison strike, both in the same year, yeah. uh, tells us a great deal. You know, from my perspective, the, what I picked up from it is that um, the prisoners themselves are on a wavelength to, to destroy it. We had a strike. Uh, when I was in Marion, Illinois, that's where they created the uh, behavior modification program, the H unit, uh, they called it, which was, at that time was the highest level security institution in the world. Right. And um, we had a strike in 1978, from 78, I think, to 80. Wow. And um, we were um, subjected to all kind of persecution, uh, the so-called leaders of it. You know, I was one of the first wave of so-called leaders 
that they grabbed up and, and uh, for the strike to try to break it. Mm. And uh, they threw me first in uh, what they call the isolation unit. And the isolation unit was just basic, you know, solitary confinement. Mm. And uh, we rebelled. We, we, <laughs> they couldn't control us. We rebelled and, and we, we broke out of the cells and all this stuff. And, and uh, I was, you know, grabbed up and beaten up and all this kind of stuff. And friends of ours, and they drug us then off to uh, the H block, as they call it, which mm. was the... Uh, the behavior, the behavior modification unit, you know, they took us there to uh, confine us under tighter conditions. And while we were in there, we found a way to break out of the cells in there and, and, and it kept fighting. But uh, some of our comrades got really badly hurt. One mm -hmm. of them got his arm broke, smashed on the oh, doors of the, of the cell when he was trying to escape. Now, the thing about these places there in, in, um, in Marion is that they had a, it wasn't just a cell they put you in. It was a cell plus... Uh, cage plus uh, plus a um, ballistic glass, you know. So you're like buried alive, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and, and they even had a worse unit called the box cars, where they didn't give you day or night. Wow. Could tell whether it was day or night. And uh, it was just dark all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, all of this was designed to break you. And then they had through the uh, the vents, and uh, they had a little sound system hooked up in the lights. It's torture, basically. It's torture, yeah. yeah. So that they can brainwash you, give you messages at night, and all this kind of garbage. Uh, then they had uh, lights on all the time. That, you know, the stuff you're talking about sounds like yeah. what Guantanamo Bay yeah, uh, people. Are, it, it, it was exactly. tested out on on, on you guys yeah. first. It they, they 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 tested out the techniques on so-called civil prisoners, prisoners who were not tried by military tribunals. Mm. They tried it. You know, in, in criminal courts, they try they, they use it on us first, yes, yes. and now um, they are using it, um, of course, in Guantanamo, and they use it in other parts of the of world course, as well. Of you know, that you know, we don't know about. to torture prisoners. So, um, but but even with all of that, even with all of that, you know, and even with all the solitary confinement, even with all the repression and all the torture, they still apparently don't have a handle on the movement. They still have not been fi have not found a way Amazing. to com completely control the prison population so that they wouldn't uh, resist in some form or fashion, and that, and that tells me a great deal. Mm. Uh, that tells me uh, that tells me everything. The fact that these prisons are able to coordinate. Uh, of course, if you look at what's happening in California, you have to look back a couple of years to what happened in Georgia, mm. because in Georgia, all the prisons came together. All you know, dispersed institutions in different parts of the state of Georgia and everything, and they had a, a hunger strike. And it lasted for several uh, weeks. Wow. And and, uh, and it, so it like laid the foundation for what happened in California. Hmm. Now, I don't remember the precise demands uh, of the hunger strike. I do remember one of the demands. Now, one of them had to do with the uh, Georgia Special Housing Unit, which is the behavior, co behavior modification stuff, right. uh, unit and so forth, and long-term confinement. So this is a serious issue. Uh, it probably is going to be one of the most decisive issues of the prison struggle in this period. In, in the previous period, it was other things, mm -hmm. and, and that movement saw itself as part of the Black Power movement. And uh, this movement, uh, is, you know, since there isn't the, uh, the uh, kind of movement in the streets as it was then, this movement sees itself as fighting for uh, uh, to destroy the, the this regime of of uh, behavior modification, uh, psychological conditioning and long-term confinement in solitary confinement. Now, I did nine years in solitary confinement, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is nothing in comparison to what they do now. I mean, that, that, that's amazing.